Hello guys, today on Practice Strokes, we're going to use floating medium and I'm gonna teach you how to float. I've got paint all over me, so just ignore me. I'm gonna show you how to float and put colors in. One of the ways that we float, there's two different ways to float, but we're using floating medium. So let me share what happens. I'm going to pick up two colors on my three quarter inch brush, which are multi-surface colors and we're using pure orange and daffodil yellow. Now I'm gonna come right here and I'm going to get the shape of a pumpkin. So I'm going both sides. I'm doing a C stroke. I need some medium. So I grab a little bit of medium and then it goes smooth. I want it to feel like butter. So if it's not feeling like butter, do not go into water, all right? So I'm gonna go closer. Those leaves are there for something we're gonna do a little bit later. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more and I'm gonna go into the next sec section of a pumpkin. Now, if it's not showing up well, I can come right in here and do the second sec section of the pumpkin. All right, then we're gonna go right here. See, I can barely see it, but I'm gonna show you a little trick later. You can go again, all right, back and forth to blend it in, okay. So I have these little lumps on the bottom, which I like. Then one more time, I'm gonna pick up pure orange and daffodil yellow, lots of orange. See how loaded it is? Lots of paint. Okay, let's come down, let's scoop back up. And then you have a nice pumpkin. This is like an easy, quick, quick, quick pumpkin. I put a teddy bear inside of this and made it look like a jack-o'-lantern costume for Halloween for a teddy bear. I made jack-o'-lanterns all types. Or we just make it a pumpkin. You can do a white pumpkin, a blue pumpkin, all kinds of pumpkins. So I wanted you to see that I'm blending and doing this um, shading with paint but i'm gonna let this dry in a few minutes and then we're going to come in here and show you how to float some color and make this look, look pretty realistic now look what happens here dark green dark green to each one of these segments and then i pull it up And we're gonna curl it around. And so it's pretty much done, but I'm gonna show you how to come in here with these leaves, which you've already had leaf lessons. And we're just gonna show you how to float and do some fun work on these leaves with floating medium. So this time I want a plate with floating medium. We'll come back and we're gonna come back to the pumpkin in a minute. All right, so I got paint all, all over me. All right, so I um, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for doing your homework. Lots of you have been doing your practicing and that's how you're going to get better. And then um, you can get all your needs on onestroke.com. We have paints and brushes and everything you need. I've got the different brushes. This one is my signature brush set. And then you'll find the green handle brushes are for those. They're more like student brushes but they work really good. If you're painting a lot, then you want to keep a nice good chisel. You would get the dark green value pack. And these are the 10 most used brushes and the 13 covers all my specialty brushes. And these have 13 brushes. So one is good and one's better. Does that help you? All right, so, and I also, I'll share really, really quick with you because it's nice for you to know brushes. Uh, these are the only kind of brushes we have right now for glass. And you can use my regular brushes for glass, but these work really nice. And if I do food painting and stuff with um, some other food dyes, then I like the white bristles so I can clean it and see it. These are good. They're not better, they're not best, but we sell these so you can have them. I used to have a whole line of glass brushes and we're hoping to get them back someday. All right, these are the value pack, the 10, 10 brushes. These are also my 10 brushes, my 10 sizes, okay? Um, and then these 
are the Donna Dewberry brushes, the value pack of um, Folk Art One Strip, all right? And so they're not too bad. They're about $16, which for 10 brushes is a really good deal because they're a good brush, all right? So I'm talking a little bit so it has time to um, dry up. And I also want you to come and come more classes here on YouTube, subscribe, and also, I am going to share with you that if you come to our Facebook group, every Tuesdays and Fridays, we have some special offerings, special deals. And so, and everybody shares their wonderful stuff. So I think you'd really enjoy being part of that family. All right, it's the Dewberry family and we do one stroke together and cry and have good times together. All right, so floating medium. I have a brush that I wet and dried on the paper towel. Then I'm gonna come here on the edge of the puddle and pull out floating medium. Okay, now if I wanna come in here and I wanna shade, this is traditionally how we paint. Um, if you do traditional one stroke, then I wanna come here and just take it to another level. I'm gonna side stroke, see how I'm side stroking? All right, so I can come right in here and shade it a little bit more. That just looks like I did a chisel in there. So I'm going to try like here. I, I didn't like the way that turned out. So I'm going to pick up more paint. See, it's not all the way across. The floating medium's almost to the brush. I could come right in here and shade and let it blend out into here so it makes it look like it went down into it that's what i was trying to do here so let me see if i can do that better here all right so i'm gonna just take it along here and make it more shaded on this side which will give you the illusion that that side's lifted and then also if i i'll show you another being on paper is a little more difficult so I'm gonna pick up medium, I'm gonna come under here, and I usually go underneath this with a color that is in the background. So a do, another shade of the color that's in the background. So right here, I'm kind of coming under here with green, and I can do that, but if I had a light blue, I would do a darker blue. But see, that makes, that lifts it up, like the leaf has a shadow, is that kind of fun? All right, so I'm picking up this and I'm coming under. Okay, just a little bit of a shadow. Now, if you're on a painted surface, I can get this to come off if, it, if I did too much. But on paper, all I can do is take that medium and kind of blend it in because it won't lift off because it's paper. Okay, but can you see, look at the difference in that one and that one it lifts it all right now let's let's pick another color so have you noticed also i shaded underneath the leaf because it would shadow down so let's come in here and let's pick up burnt umber now, now watch what i'm doing i picked up a little bit of medium not in the middle of that puddle side stroke all right so now let's see what we're going to do here if I, if I do all of the tops, I, I mean, if I did the top, I need to do all the tops. If I'm doing underneath, I need to do underneath, all right? So that's just kind of a, a gauge that you can go by, all right? So I'm going to come right here, and I'm going with this heavy, dark edge going against the leaf, all right? So this would be a tan color and just... Pretend that I have a light taupey color back here, okay? So then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more medium every time medium, just on the edges there and come here. Okay, so I can come right here and let this shadow down over that leaf a little bit. See how the brown's gonna go over? So what that does is it puts that leaf behind that leaf. Now, this is just a, a beginner fun when I say when I'm painting with you 
and I say, let's float this, I want y'all to know what floating means. Um, I didn't float for a long time, so don't feel like you have to know how to float right away, but I want you to know what it means, all right? We have all kinds of tools like daubers and how to use stencils and I'm going to how to do metallic and work with those colors. So I'm going to do all that with you as we go. So if there's something you're like, Don, I really want to learn this, please share that with us. Because see how I'm going slowly so you see it. Now see how I can put brown in here. And also, if you have like a, a fruit leaf and it's got um, a little divot out of the leaf. Look, I can come in here and just add a little, like like an insect bit it. <laughs> okay, and if you're on a painted canvas, you can just get that and cut it away like it has a piece of it missing. Now, see, I don't like the way this looks down here. So I can still come in here. Let's say I'll go back to the green and I can do a heavier shade. You see how I fix that leaf right away? I'm going to float along here and a heavier shade. And you can also kind of fix a tip. See right along here and fix the point. All right. Now, I did the top of this one and all these were the bottoms, but I just had a little problem there so that's why I was sharing that with you all right so now I have another thing to share with you like I, I love floating medium for and that is I'm going to come here to what brush is this my eight all right so let's say I've got brown and we're going to have a little rusty um, Pueblo because of the pumpkin so I'm going to come here and I'm going to clean my brush out with floating medium. See, I'm just getting rid of it. I can even add a little bit of green in there. Okay, so you wipe it all out. This is after I clean my brush in floating medium. I lay it on the paper towel. Can you see I wiped it off? Now I'm going to paint with this. So I just pick it up and I want you to see that I do one. These are shadow leaves. Two, three. I'm going to come back here. All right, and then I'm going to pull with the stem right into that shadow leaf. Okay, I can add a few more. And you can also, if you have a light colored leaf, you can also come right here. Let me get some more of this. One, two, three. And so this is like, there's some leaves up above here and they're shadowing down on top of that leaf. Okay, I also have done this with red. Look, we put a little bit of red leaves, purple leaves. And they're real thin. And so that's called shadow leafing. And the less paint in it, the more it looks like a, a see-through shadow. And I can keep getting medium and take it lighter and lighter. Watch this, I keep coming over here. Lighter, lighter. And look, you can still see it shadowing. Isn't that fun? And I use metallic to do that with too. Okay, so let's go back up here. It's still a little wet, but I still can go ahead and share with you. Let me show you how we're gonna shadow this. I can either use the orange and shade in here or the yellow, or I can take the medium. I'm going to show you more of using paint the shadow some other time. So I'm going to take my medium. I want to keep all the Pueblo on one edge. I'm going to come under here. See how I'm flat? I'm coming along here flat. And I come to the edge. Now instantly, look at that compared to that. I can also come around that stem. Okay, so I'm going to get more. Come around the stem. I can also come right up here. Okay. 
Okay, a little bit more. A little bit more. Until I get the darkness I want. And so then it looks like we really know what we're doing. So see, this is what I don't want. That means I let that, that come across the brush and I need to work it out. So just go back and forth back and forth and clean that up against the pumpkin okay now on this side i'm gonna turn upside down so i can get to it in front of the camera these leaves i would put up underneath here all right so now i'm going to come in here with a little bit of apple red okay so we can come back down here if we want red or if we're using a white pumpkin we might do blue on here or tan see the reds or look i can now get the reds and some burn umber see this didn't show up very well so i'm going to come all the way in here and go back and forth All right, and clean this up. But guess what's going to happen here? There was a lot of ridge of paint there. So let me show you what I can do. I can clean my brush. All right, and I can come right back in here with medium. Now watch what happens. I'm going to take that medium and I'm going to clean up this edge that I took over on top of the orange. You see that? with just medium and that happens when i get carried away and put too much on there but just then i picked up a little bit too much of the orange so i can just add the orange right back but you got to take off the ridge before you can add the orange pure orange back in there all right so there's some color shading so this is pueblo this is red apple red this is apple red with some burnt umber. All right, and then all I have to do is come up here to finish this off. And that's what most people do. They just put a glob there. And we don't want to have that. So grab it and pull it down. Okay? Grab it and pull it down. That's when you put too much paint and not medium. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it inspires you to learn how to float so look oh i need to show you wrong and right that's why i need to show you oh so that's wrong <laughs> see the extra little paint i've got there i can take and try to rub that out but i have orange on there so okay so what people do wrong is they think that yeah, they get the medium and they get this rust burnt uh, pueblo and they think instead of this that we're doing this that we're up on the chisel of the brush doing this this is your chisel but what we're doing is we're laying it and we're floating it across and if the floats too wide we can keep going over it with medium and pushing it back and blending it all right that's what you want it to look like and then this is what people do also they keep going back and forth okay and then they have this and so they have a big stroke that you can see the whole width is not what we want we want to see it only strong there this can be if i wanted it stronger like that but what we need is it's real strong here and it fades away to nothing. All right. So there we go. I'm excited to see you guys practice and try it and share it with me. Not try it, practice and do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. See you next week.